This is Minecraft UI with texture pack. I'm about to show you how you can change it from this to this. Howdy Minecrafters, it's Aklazen. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to customize Bedrock UI with all of UI basics. To make it easy, I'm gonna break the basics into three parts. You need to know all of this to be good at customizing UI. Anyway, without any further ado, let's head on to the basic number one. UI textures can be found inside of the texture folder in UI and UI folder. These folders provide all of UI textures so you'll be able to customize it. You may wonder what's the difference between them. Well, if you take a look closer in UI folder, some textures were assembled to other textures related. This means we could customize a bunch of UI textures in just one image, which is a good option for beginner and faster work. However, textures here are very limited and some of them work at all, like experience bar and hunger bar. Because of that, you also need UI folder to make a full customization. This folder might have thousands of files, but it has every UI textures in the game. So that, UI folder is useful for details. Speaking of UI textures, you're probably confused on how to find UI textures that you need. My only solution for now is doing an experiment, a lot of playtests. For example, I want to figure out what is dialog background. To do this, I'll give each background a different color. After that, I will input the pack and look for the texture. And as you can see here, I already found the yellow one. So this one is for play screen. Take note and write it down for documentation. Keep searching to all screen and you will find out which works and doesn't work. Doesn't matter if it's wasting time or not. If you keep searching, your documentation's gonna be bigger, bigger, and eventually have a full documentation. That's all for UI texture, I guess. You can ask people from pack community to solve your problem, but sometimes it won't help. Alright, now moving on to the basic number two. Nice. Alright, so I made a custom button texture for this tutorial. You might thinking this is just a bad texture. Well, yes, but actually no. I literally made the design to be as good as this. But this is what I get. Just a button with orange background. If you have a problem like scale distortion on the texture, you have skipped this important step. And I'm gonna show you what's going on. You may never heard about 9slice before. Well, basically, 9slice is a scaling method that preserves the texture detail. This can be achieved by dividing image into 9 separate parts. When an image scaled with 9 slices, the corner slices are moved without being resized, and the edge and center slices are stretched to fit the space between the corners. By the way, thanks to GameMaker for this information. That we come to our question, how do we set up our 9 slice then? All you need to do is look for UI textures that you want to change the 9 slice size. We are not gonna interact with it, instead, we are gonna use its JSON file. All of these JSON files contains information of 9 slice size for its texture. In this page, we got base size and 9 slice size. Base size is the resolution of the image texture, so you just need to type your image resolution. For 9 slice size, you can use 3 factor formats. The first format is manually put all of slices size. As you can see how it looks on the screen. To get this clear, the slice line moves to the center of image as you increase the size number. The second format is you only put two numbers. This include both vertical and horizontal slices size. Even better, the last format is only one number that includes every slice size. Let's try to fix this button. This time, I changed the 9 slice to 0. Now let's see what happened. I mean, it kinda worked though, but I forgot to change the base size during recording. Let's just skip it. We move on to the basic number 3. Of course you all don't want to see text color doesn't match with your theme, but this time, we'll be able to match it with one simple file of code. We get out from textures folder, and now we go to UI folder. The file is called global variables, and you can see it near the top. Let's take a look of the file. You can see a lot of text in Minecraft screen have been colored by this file. Same like UI folder, this file has a lot of lines of text variables. So back to when I say the only way is to do experiment. Back to the point. Now pay attention to these codes. This color code is not something else, but actually have a name, RGB0 to 1. The function is similar to RGB encoding, only two square brackets for the H, and the value divided by 255. So instead of 255, RGB0 to 1 max value is 1. To copy any color, you need to go to RGB0 to 1 color picker website. This site is fully functional, so not only you can choose any color, but you can also paste a color by replacing either the hex code or the RGB code. After that, back to the file, choose your text variable and paste it here. 
and you have done it. That's all of the basics for customizing UI. By the way, if you scroll down here, there is a color code with four color channels. This one called RGBA. The A itself stands for Alpha, but I don't know how to use the Alpha channel because it doesn't change the text transparency, so I don't need to talk about it. After we learn that, let's create a custom UI. That's all for today's video. I really hope the UI basics I gave to you is actually useful. Leave a like and subscribe and see you next time. Be red and blue.